I'm Shayla Reeves. This is CBS News Minnesota's morning update. Grab that coffee and let's get you up to speed on your news and weather. Of course, today is a next weather alert day and next weather meteorologist Micah Gustinak has a quick look at what you can expect today. All right, Shayla. So here's the deal. We have some scattered non severe thunderstorms moving through the metro that you want to grab the umbrella for off and on through about 10 or 11 o'clock this morning. Then a bit of a break as temperatures climb into the mid to upper 80s to potentially near 90 before our next wave of thunderstorms develops. This is really the main event. This is the um, the highest severe weather threat we've had across the region this year, tied with what came in a couple of weeks ago uh, in early to mid May, and that is a category four out of five risk in and near this red shaded area. This only happens once or twice a year on average in Minnesota, and this severe weather setup is more common across the tornado alley states south of us during this time of year. Weather impacts between about 3 p.m. and 11 p.m. include pretty much everything you could not want. Tornadoes, damaging straight line winds, large hail and flooding. And in fact, we do have flash flood warnings already in effect for areas up around uh, Itasca and St. Louis County. The tornado probability is going to get all the attention today. This hatched area, those black lines up and down, that's where the Storm Prediction Center thinks long track tornadoes that are at least EF2 strength or stronger are possible. There's also a threat for widespread damaging straight line winds developing later, later today. But again, uh, even though that will get all the attention, I want to urge you to keep in mind that flooding unfortunately causes more deaths every year than the combination of straight line winds, hail and tornadoes. So please don't sleep on this flash flood threat. Uh, flash flood warning in effect for the next several hours here from Hibbing to Grand Rapids, but there could be more of these coming up later today. Don't drive into areas where water covers the road and be aware of where you're going to take shelter later today if severe weather threatens. I know a lot of people are at the cabin. Maybe they don't typically experience severe weather at the cabin. Figure it out now. Where are you going to go to stay safe later on? Always important to plan ahead. Thank you so much, Mike. It's Memorial Day, a day when we remember and honor the men and women who have died while serving in the military. The state's official ceremony is happening at Fort Snelling National Cemetery, where over the weekend, volunteers place flags at more than 200,000 gravestones. This morning, we want to hear from you. Tell us about a service member that you're remembering today. Those watching on Facebook, Facebook, please share those in stories in the comments. Now to some of the news making headlines in Minnesota and around the country today. Baby formula is still in short supply. According to Data Assembly, which tracks product data, nearly 70% of formula was out of stock for the week ending May 21st. But easing the shortage, a second delivery from overseas with the equivalent of about 1 million bottles will be hitting shelves this week. Pools and beaches are starting to open up for the summer, but a nationwide lifeguard shortage could impact some of those plans. The American Lifeguard Association estimates that a third to half of the nation's 300,000 pools could be affected. We're seeing signs advertising jobs at pools in the Twin Cities. The problem existed before the pandemic, but experts say it made it worse because many pools had to cancel training sessions and young applicants are finding other work with higher pay. International Falls is being hit hard as water levels in Rainy Lake continue to rise. Experts say the lake will keep rising this week before possibly breaking the all-time record set in 1950. Minnesota State Auditor Julie Blaha visited the area yesterday and shared these pictures on Twitter. You can see floodwaters covering the roads, washing out some of the decks. She said that several resorts there were still hosting guests despite battling the waters. Today, the city of Duluth welcomes its first cruise ship in nearly a decade. These are some photos of the Viking Octantis from just a few days ago. It's carrying 400 passengers and 250 crew members and is stopping as a part of its eight day Great Lakes tour. Today, the ship will arrive at a new custom facility at the Duluth Entertainment and Convention Center. This is the first of nine cruise ships set to arrive in the Duluth Harbor this summer. Top Gun Maverick is number one at the box office. Your instructor is one of the finest pilots this program has ever produced.
The long-awaited Tom Cruise sequel earned an estimated $124 million in ticket sales and will likely have over $150 million by the end of the long holiday weekend. The film is playing on a record 4,700 North American screens. Astronomers are forecasting a chance of a spectacular meteor storm later tonight or early Tuesday morning, but there is a catch. The night sky could be lit up by as many as 1,000 shooting stars, or it could be a complete dud. This particular event is called the Tau Herculid meteor shower, and it could last an hour or two. NASA is predicting its peak will hit around 1 o'clock Tuesday morning. It should be visible high in the sky over North America. That is, of course, if the weather cooperates. Rates. Here's a new Guinness World Record for you. The largest number of people dressed up as vampires in one place. Nearly 1,400 vampires gathered at Whitby Abbey in Yorkshire, England to celebrate the 125th anniversary of the publication of Dracula. Fitting because the Abbey is said to be the inspiration behind the gothic horror tale. The world's largest glass bottom bridge is now open to tourists. It's located in Vietnam. The bridge is more than 2,000 feet long. It's made from three layers of thick glass. The result is a see-through walkway that can hold 450 people at a time. Engineering required to build that into the side of a cliff, but maintain all the features of nature, the greenery, the rock, has been an amazing project, very successful, and I think it will attract a lot of tourists. China held the previous record for the longest glass bottom bridge. Its creation is just over 1,700 feet long. Sunday's Lynx game was a confusing one for fans. The team retired Simone Augustus, number 33, just before they faced the L.A. Sparks, for whom she now coaches. Here's the emotional scene at Target Center, where the number three she wore joins Lindsay Whalen's number 13 and will soon be joined by Rebecca Brunson's number 32. Augustus is thanking Lynx fans who support her in good times and bad. For 14 years, you know, I got a chance to meet and greet a lot of fans. I learned sign language from a fan. I, I met a wheelchair crew that just I adore. Um, I, met the, I met the Delta agent when I first got here. I mean, I can go on and on with different stories where fans were, um, you know, showcasing their love and displaying their affection, even when we weren't, you know, the links that you all know and recognize now. From 2006 to 10, we were the worst team in the league, and yet we had some of the most loyal and dedicated fans, and, and that's what it was all about. The Lynx ended up losing that game by two points. That's your morning update from CBS News Minnesota, your local streaming news source. Thanks for watching. We'll see you back here at 730 tomorrow morning.